Welcome to Aesthetics Mastery. I'm Dr. Tim Pierce. Hi, I'm Ryder Pierce. And this is the podcast that helps you raise the bar and thrive in your aesthetics career. We've got an interesting one for you today. We're going to go deep on what it takes to really secure a future for yourself in medical aesthetics. And we're going to break that down into all the areas or the domains of competence that I think you need to master in order to secure a thriving future for aesthetics. It's really interesting to me because I feel like I hang out with online so many people in aesthetics who they fall in love with it. They're completely ahead of their heels in love with aesthetics. They're either super early in their journey and they're a bit kind of scared about the various elements, don't quite know where to go. But they all they're they're further on, but they they are like, oh my god, this is the future for me. You know, it's really, it's meeting all my needs. I feel uh, valued by my customers. You know, I feel actually that it's it's such a creative endeavor having your own business, isn't it? Yeah, it's scary, but you get to create and carve out your own world. The thing is, though, if we have fallen in love with it how the heck do we master it how do we become like you are now a master of aesthetics both in terms of business and in terms of clinical how do we kind of how do we grasp that dream that we see and and move ourselves up that ladder yeah i think what a lot of people are craving is is exactly probably asked in different ways that exact question which is um partly around breaking down what are the components of that future that you want because it isn't quite as simple as um you know it's not just a sequence of training courses for most people it's it's more complex and there are multiple i mean especially when you're starting your own business it might be simpler if you work going to work for someone else and you just need to do injectables but the truth is most people you're in either first time you're an independent practitioner there's no one to back you up you need to understand all sorts of things from how to hide, how to handle client complaints to how to handle complications to how to consult people and how to store your documents and how to market yourself, um, you know, and how to all this all the compliance and the there's just a huge amount. And when you first start out, often it feels quite simple, and then you you really rapidly hit a brick wall somewhere along the lines. And then you've got to overcome that. And obviously, we've been on that journey now. We're eleven years into it, um, and we know a lot about what it takes to get you to that end point. But clinically, though, let's start there because, yeah, the lo- there's loads of different sort of elements that one needs to master if you want a life and aesthetics. But me asking you now as a clinician, what does mastery look like clinically? How can I, when could I declare myself an aesthetics master? What I like to think about mastery is, is, is a continuous journey. It's more of a way of, of approaching aesthetic, like any task, like I'm going to rel- relentlessly try and get better at this. There comes a point where you're balancing so many variables that you anyone would look from the outside and say you are a master. But whenever you ask a master, they're always still learning. That's yeah. one of the one of the components of mastery actually is you're always curious. You never close yourself off to a, a new and better way of doing something. But at the same time, there's a huge sort of body of knowledge that a master has to have in order to to assess whether any changes are actually a good idea or not. It's one of the things I always spot with new injectors when they go to their first conference. They often just give up everything they've learned and do the latest thing that someone showed them on stage. And like a technique. Yeah. Um, they think, oh, no, there's a new way of doing it. It's this now. That's, that's not what a, ma- a master takes the best of every technique and combines it to make an overall set of skills that, that may be adjusted frequently, but there's a core that's, that's true. There's, there are principles that are that are honed through real experience and practice and training that you become a bit more, um, you're consistent with. Because there is an, ultimately, there's an ultimate truth to what we're attempting to do, which is, I think, one of the key parts of mastery is you understand that it's all about this managing this entire client journey from the first time they think about a treatment all the way through to resolving a complication. You know, there's a, there's a huge amount of stuff that's got, to, that's got to link those stages together seamlessly so that no one gets hurt your reputation is always intact in fact thriving this podcast is about how to master your your aesthetics business so that you can master your life so that you have this beautiful life where actually you feel fulfilled every day and you feel recognized every day so where does it start like what's the first component of aesthetics mastery um i think well probably the first thing is around i always think is it's kind of insane if you imagine what happens which is a phone rings you pick up the phone and someone says, hi, I'd like you to inject my face, please. <laughs> like, how, can you imagine how much 
get, just imagine what a threatening that scenario that really is like to actually have a needle put in your face for most people that's a pretty scary thing so what on earth has happened to someone outside of the time when you meet them that has got them to the point where they're actually really wanting that in fact they want to pay for it so there's a whole journey that happens before you even lay eyes on a patient that you need to be able to master you need to understand what what is what who what are the real needs that you're serving who are these people where do they hang out what are they actually trying to achieve in their life like what 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 are they either freeing themselves from or empowering themselves to do because if you understand that you can speak to them on a level that that basically no one else can do so yeah that's the first domain is to really be in touch with the the real stories that drive patients seeking help with aesthetic problems i i would say that we i try and treat the story not not the wrinkle because yeah. the story is usually vastly more interesting and also people want to know that you heard their story that you took the time they might not articulate it like this in their head but they want to know you know um is my backstory is it important to you this person who's putting that needle in my face mm. and then that builds trust so once you understand the story you actually really resolve the real problem which is never about the throat it's about what the throat means in the context of their life and that's the same with aesthetics so if you can if you can make that one of your primary goals and it's it's a skill that you have to learn through trying different ways of phrasing um questions through reflecting back at people um there's there's endless ways that you can get the right story out and also many ways you can ask questions that don't ever seem to get close to the real reason so you it's it's one of those skills that you continuously have to practice and hone but when you understand it everything flows from that point because then you you're in touch with the real problem and personally i think there are no cosmetic procedures that involve risk that you can justify without having a psychological benefit and that's why mm. i think one of the the central tenet of mastery is mastering patient psychology because we shouldn't be taking risk with people's faces unless you're sure that you're actually going to create a benefit yeah. and a straight nose is only a benefit like because plenty of people are perfectly happy with a bump on their nose and they don't think about it so how can i take the risk of blinding someone because that is one of the risks be it one in a million um how can i take that risk without a definite story about how their life is going to be better with it afterwards so you have it has to start with your ability to establish the patient story and then all the things that go with those skills so build trust communication make sure they understand the risks that they're going through all of that is very um psychological but what i think is particularly beautiful is that you have basically said it is your duty as a clinician to get that out of them to to make sure that you are connecting their true need with this thing that you're about to do that it d- does have some risk attached to it but i think we can take heart in the fact that the sounds like the first step is actually connecting with another human being in front of you and making sure that you truly hear them hmm that's interesting i I, th- i think you're right i think um probably a lot of people a lot of healthcare practitioners actually go into into healthcare initially for their ability to do that mm. they like the idea of seeing someone else's pain identifying with it and then preferably removing it helping them in some way um but it is quite it's a it's an interpersonal skill there are people who are interested in people tend to go into healthcare mm. so um that that is that's exactly that is the first domain of mastery because that's that's ultimately where all the value lies it's yeah. not really about the other things and just a sort of a super practical point when you you've been injecting for 11 years and i noticed that when you started to ramp up the consultation because that's what we're talking about isn't it is the consultation the pre-injection when you started to absolutely master that intentionally master that interestingly your average appointment value you've shot up 80% in 2 years that is to say you were injecting a lot more because you were connecting a lot more with people mm. and the reason i bring up that average appointment value i know we're not talking about money but is naturally if you are injecting more product you are going to be getting higher closer to that 10,000 hours that people always talk about you know bill gates 10,000 hours of coding before he invented you know invented microsoft and Uh, you but you're going to put yourself in a position to be able to master the other things by getting the consultation right fascinating yeah. so everything flows from that that goal to improve someone's well-being but then you have to have the skills to back it up so um you then need to understand the key thing is you have to actually understand aesthetics so aesthetics is a, is a word that's it's become a it's become a verb um do i mean that yeah um yeah it's become 
forgotten my GCSE English just gone out the window. But it's not the 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 point. The point is aesthetics is a um, it, it's it's beauty. It's not it's not a thing. It's not just because you're injecting someone. That's what I mean. It's not just a, it's not a verb. I don't do aesthetics. Aesthetics is a is a is a is a, is a discipline. It's a realm of uh, of of how, of how you how you feel when you see something so if you're good at aesthetics you create a beautiful image it's not about the fact that you can do injections that's not aesthetics it's just the it's it's what a like a ballpoint pen to a paintbrush like you can make a mark but it doesn't mean it's art it doesn't matter if you're using a paintbrush or not there's a difference between painting and art and that's the thing that's changing you really need to understand what is beautiful um what is what is not beautiful where 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 does where does um, a projection on a cheek go from being beautiful to being overtreated? Mm -hmm. Really hard thing to define. There are rules and ratios, but some of it is is rep repeatedly looking and studying, and uh, and actually sometimes it's about going a bit far and, and not liking the, your result. I actually look for clinicians who are dissatisfied. Like, I think dissatisfaction is a really good thing. You should have With a lot. Work. Yeah, you should have a lot of dissatisfaction when you first start. Usually, it's that actually patients need a bit more. And they they only put two mils in and they expect a facelift. Um, but there are also those like I, I, it's really whenever I look at before and afters on the internet, I, the the worst ones are when they've actually downgraded a patient and put it on their marketing i'm like you're actually they're actually blind to the fact that they look yeah. worse i'm much happier with people who are continuously dissatisfied always want more like i think there's room there you can tell there's a difference between what you want and what you're achieving and that's where all the growth happens if you think you can inject for six months and just be happy with all your results chances are all your results are pretty mediocre like can it be taught these aesthetics rules yeah absolutely well it can be taught when you have the dissatisfaction if you just can't see it then it's harder. I still think you can be taught because you can make progress in any domain. You, but you need you need to break it down into into components, and it needs to be explained to you in in several different ways. So usually it's, you know, that you 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 can verbally explain it, and you can use analogies, and you can talk about the curves and the lights and the reflections, and you can use cartoons and graphic design examples. I, I use lots of that stuff to try and get it. And, and most people, most any intelligent person can kind of start to make progress along that way. Um, I don't think, I mean, I have to say that actually, because I remember when I first did, the first injection I ever did was a nasolabial fold. And I remember thinking, I don't understand how that did anything. I could see the shadow was different, but it didn't mean anything to me yet. And it's almost like I was looking at it intellectually rather than using the aesthetic part of my brain. That's more about how you, how it feels. Right. Though that's, where real, that's where the real domain of aesthetics is, is how do you take something that might be the angle of someone's jawline that you can memorize that, you know, should be 128 degrees or whatever. Um, how do you take that and apply it to the right patient at the right time so that they end up looking more beautiful rather than just having a straight jawline? Like there's a difference. Yeah, okay. So we've done this amazing consultation where we've opened the door to all the different domains of mastery. We've connected with them. We've made sure that we're matching our treatment and what we can do with what they actually need at that deep level. Then we've applied, still in the consultation, we've applied the aesthetics, uh, the rules of beauty. They, they, are, they are rules. They're rules that can be taught. What's next? Well, once you've got an aesthetic goal, you then you're basically then planning to intervene on someone's body, like the, this, their physiology and their their anatomy is about to be impacted by your needle. So, the the next area of mastery is that you have to you have to navigate that with the minimal possible force and risk, so that you're you're creating a, a difference without making things worse. Because ultimately, this is about patient well-being. So, it doesn't make sense, for example, to have an injection technique that works really well but like three percent of people end up with a traumatized facial nerve and then mm -hmm. half their face doesn't move like you've you're not a master it doesn't matter how good that result is in the yeah. 97 percent, it's way too high yeah. so we don't do it so what the difference is, when a master is injecting it's they don't have an injection technique they have a set of principles that they apply that minimizes risk um at, in any in, in any area of the face so it might be something like I know that the artery runs in this direction in in 80% of cases. So if I enter at 90 degrees to the artery instead of parallel to it in all my injection strategies, then all my injection plans, then I will be l least likely to, to cannulate that artery. I also know the depth of it. So you change it in essentially in, in every, um, in, in what's the word, in every dimension, 
you're minimizing risk and and Im- improving the effectiveness of it but that's that's mentally very difficult like you you have you're, th- you're thinking a lot so something i realized is i think way more in a procedure now than i used to 10 years ago 10 years ago i was doing an injection now i'm like angle position depth volume all these things are continuously going going on in my mind and you know what's happening as i push the plunger how does the patient respond um what what am i watching am i watching the needle tip or the or the or the bevel or the cannula or the um the plunger you know there's all these things that you're continuously weighing up and you and you're tweaking the variable in order to maximize the benefit and minimize the risk is it something that you could pass on to us i i think i think you can pass it on really quickly because well, when you're trained by someone who thinks this way, it comes out of your mouth anyway. Like you're continuously justifying what you're doing and, and you're telling a story. You know, even the stuff I've already said for some people, I'd be like, well, yeah, that's a new thing. I can implement that straight away. There's a really clear story there, which is if, you're, if your needle is parallel to the artery, you're more likely to cannulate it than if you're at 90 degrees to it. And if it's at the same depth of the artery, you're more likely to cannulate it than if it's deeper or more superficial to it. So I'm going to build those two factors into my injection strategy and you're you're off you have a reason behind your injections but that's the key thing is it's this reasoned it's a bit like your um it's like any argument it doesn't really matter what you what someone thinks it's always more interesting to hear why they think that Mm. because that tells you how they landed up that way because you can meet intelligent people with vastly different opinions on things and only when you understand how they got there does it make any sense otherwise you just think the world's crazy and but it's a bit like that with injection strategy that if someone just shows you how they inject but there's no reasoning behind it it's really hard to say why it's wrong. And sometimes it looks, if you don't understand the story behind it, it can look a bit wrong. We, unfortunately, if you just learn injection, like this is just the way we do it, which a lot of people train that way, this is the way we do it, you're, you're kind of lost at sea in terms of justifying it and, and, and also in terms of interpreting different techniques. If you've got the reasons behind the injection, you can start to weigh that up against the new story that you meet. It's, it's what I also say, I think I already said it, around comparing different people who inject in the industry you'll meet you know you might watch arthur swift inject and two hours later roger killer inject you know both great injectors doing it differently how the hell do you decide which one to do well the only way is to get the story behind the injection like listen to the reasoning then compare each reason the the set of reasons that they present and make up your mind according to what you already know which one seems more plausible Um, and then then you progress you actually get to stand on the shoulders of these people rather than just jumping from one to the next so are you saying that mastery is a way of thinking yeah it's a way of thinking it's also it's an attitude which is that you're never you're never completely finished you know i think anyone who who tells you they really know everything is is probably not going to be a master so you're describing the anatomy as not being a paint by numbers situation so now take us through to actually designing the treatment can that be paint by numbers well the the the, the treat i mean it can be but the treatment design is really that's where you're trying to pull together everything into 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 one strategy before you do your treatment design you're then applying anatomy so once you've got the story and the aesthetics and then then you're on to the um, the anatomy you're trying to do it in a way that's least likely to cause a problem and most likely to work so and and, and efficiency as well so you're often trying to trying to do as much as you can with not with not not like everyone has a bottomless budget yeah. so you you you're trying to be efficient as well and all of that comes into your understanding of anatomy and where best to place it but it's it's all simultaneously and this is the really difficult thing with it is you're often you're you're often trying to prioritize according to the story but also the anatomy like and you're trying to get them in the right sequence so that you can make this is the key thing is you're making a psychological benefit because often you can do great injections that transform someone in a way that you think is great but if you haven't matched it to the story then it's still a failed treatment even though they look great in the before and after picture they can still be unhappy with you Mm. because you haven't got it in the right sequence so it's really mentally hard but once you're aware of the principles of psychology aesthetics anatomy injection strategy then you're much more likely to actually be able to to, to deliver that more often they'll understand the treatment design and everything flows from that then then they're much more likely to be happy afterwards you're actually more likely to get them happier psychologically and then you've you've completed your goal basically so we've everything has led up to the moment now we're about to that person a while ago called you up and said i want a needle in my face and now you're about to put a needle in the face. So those that actual injection technique, this is the thing I think that most people think about when they think about mastery. 
how can we master that? What are the steps to t- taking someone who might be listening from maybe having never injected aesthetically in this industry to becoming a master of their injections? Well, similar, it's about weaving the philosophy, this whole philosophy into tiny little actions. So the, your number one component for any healthcare professional is to do, as l- basically to do no harm. That really means balancing risk and harm because you can't do anything unless you take up some, some amount of risk. But it's how do I do this with a minimum risk um, for the maximum benefit? So that, that is actually built into the angle and the position of your injection. So you're, you're con- you're, the last thought I would say before you inject should be around safety. Like where, where is the artery? What is nearby that I could hit by mistake? What's likely to happen as I push the plunger if I'm in the wrong place or as I put the needle in? That means I could stop before it might make it too bad. Um, how much am I going to put in? How can I chip away at the risk along that journey? And how can I check afterwards that I haven't caused a problem and make sure that the patient knows all these things I've done so that they can also react better after the procedure if need be. So yeah, it's a, you're, you're trying to integrate all of this um, as much as you can of all the philosophy into the actual individual injection, which is, it sounds much harder work than it is because you've already done the work along the way. So are you almost kind of saying that the actual, the mo- <laughs> like the money shot, the moment when the needle goes in the face, is actually made so much easier by mastering all the other domains as well. Yeah, absolutely. Well, patients, when you've done everything right up to that point, they're already in a completely different state. And they you can always tell when you haven't done the other things right because they often restart the consultation. Mm. But what about you as the injector? Are you, how do you feel having got those other elements mastered? Yeah, I mean, there's still... Honestly, like I, I'm, st- I'm still hyper focused at that point. So I don't feel it's not like it's easy from that point. I'm still thinking very hard about. Well, this is the other thing about mastery is that you get very, you get increasingly precise the more, the more these things are alive in your mind. So, for me, injecting. I mean, I know this from when you train people that when you inject someone who's, when you're training someone who's just starting, they a centimeter to them makes no difference. Like they can't tell the difference between a needle here and a needle here. Whereas for me, it's like one is just an insane injection and the other one's the right injection. And that's just something that happens. Your resolution of what you understand in the face goes up and up until until a tiny angle. It looks like I'm doing nothing. I'm just lining up the angle of my chin and I'm changing it by 10 degrees. For me, that's significant because I know exactly what I'm trying to achieve. And I know that if I'm slightly higher, it's going to project slightly forward. And if I'm slightly lower, it's going to project inferior. And I'm trying to get the balance just right. So that's that's something that happens when you've got your aesthetic rules very clear in your mind and your anatomy um, and the, the two together are, are guiding every every component of your injection and even when <clears throat> let's say that you have done everything you can and you have you know you you knew the anatomy super well you know you you matched the uh, treatment design with their with their their deeper needs all, all of the things you knew the aesthetics rule rules and yet still a complication happens how do we become you know how the hell do we master complications well complications are are also one of the things that's built into the whole process in a way so you're you're already trying to avoid them with your injection technique so you're constantly thinking of it that way but but all the way through that you're also thinking about minimizing risk so there are once you get on in this way of thinking there are there are so many ways of reducing risk um, at least based on the first principles. So, for example, you know, if you inject half a mil of filler into an artery, it's significantly worse than if you inject 0.05 mils. So that that's a, a clear first principle that you can use to adjust your injection technique. You're, you're thinking about complications the whole way through. And, you know, once they leave your clinic, there are also other things you can do to keep them safer at that point and things you can teach them and systems you can set up. But it's all it's all about minimizing risk at every single touch point that you can think of so hearing obviously i know your journey but hearing it again laid out in those in those eight domains it makes me feel certain if i was an injector i would think right okay i need to do this 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 and this and i will be on my journey towards mastery but there is one piece missing i'm kind of thinking well like okay, that sounds great. I understand the different domains better. I understand the skeleton almost of mastery, but how do I actually get the meat? How do I, how can I become, you know, can can you teach me more? Like what's my next step? How can I become a master? 
Well, I mean, this is this is what we're currently trying to solve um, with our with our mastery program. It enables me to look for opportunities to to give them as much as possible in a way that's different to when you sign up to just one course. Like I've I've come to do, you know, even at, even the level seven, which is the biggest thing that we sell. Like it's grounded around around getting proficient and validated at foundation level skills. But what it isn't is becoming a master because there's there's much more to it than those foundation skills. So you can obviously you can do that as part of mastery, but the key thing is I get to take every patient that comes across that I, that I that we come across for someone who's on that journey and teach them as much as possible rather than just this narrow segment here. So that's that's the key thing I think that's that's going to be different with the mastery program is we're going to we're going to be able to really unleash the everything we know with each delegate who comes through and does that because they they signed up to the whole journey which is i think the most exciting thing rather than small snippets so just to be clear in skin viva training our training arm currently we have all these courses and we support you know delegates so 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 much and you know we're so highly thought of in the industry but are you saying that you're almost a little bit frustrated that you can't take delegates who are working in their own businesses through that kind of mastery you know apprentice to mastery program and that's what you're trying to replicate with this with this new this new offer it's going to be training yeah so it's the ability to go further because we know that we're on a long journey together so if, if you've only got a short journey you've got to be really efficient with what you with what you get covered um, whereas if you're if you're if you're signed up to the whole hog, it makes it easier even on day one to go off a little bit and take the opportunity because often you're limited by what the patient actually needs in terms of practical skills. So what we need to do is free up free up the way that the training process goes so that you can get you you can basically train people on a more holistic patient journey much earlier on, so that you're able to branch out and do more they're often called more advanced or but they're actually not that technically any more difficult they're just rarer so what is the mastery program actually going to to do for delegates what what are they actually going to touch and feel and and, and attend and so over the last seven or eight years that we've been training we've built up basically a wealth of experience in how to move people along towards in their aesthetics journey and what we decided the best thing to do would be is to take and sequence all the, the wealth of information we've got in terms of e-learning and our level seven qualification and try and put it into a sequence first. Um, but the next thing is to fill in some really important gaps which are which really are essential for mastery that are gonna be the, the, the additional components such as a mentorship element, um, but also kind of filling in with e-learning and with online support groups, some of, some of the really detailed, more high level stuff um, that that you need to be able to implement on a day to day basis. So it's 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 much more kind of three dimensional in terms of how you teach. We get, we will obviously have practical training as we've always done. There'll be mentorship days. There'll be e learning. There'll be online group support. Um, and everyone on the mastery program will be basically united under this umbrella of the masters in training, who will be able to who will be able to connect with each other and and basically have a, have a continuous conversation with us the whole time that they're going through a journey until they come out the other end being really fantastic assets to the whole industry. That's ultimately the goal. So who is this course actually for? Well, the course definitely isn't for everyone. This isn't if you just want a little hobby on the side. It is for someone who really wants to go in and really master a new field because it is, that's essentially what you're talking about is aesthetics in 10 years ago was sold as just injections and ultimately it's way more interesting and complex than that and if you want to go all all into it and become really really good at what you do and make the corresponding difference to your patients that only someone who's really good can achieve then this this is the ideal journey for for you in fact i'm pretty sure it'll be the only way to do this in the uk is that we can really take someone who really wants to get that good and all all the way as far as I can possibly get them with with the potential that they have, which is probably exceeding what they think they've got, yeah. um, and make make a really big difference. Really, I'd love to be able to say I've really created great injectors who've gone on to do great work and to make people's lives better as part of the process. Absolutely, and of course, if you are absolutely loving life, you've got your injection technique on point, you know, you're, you've got your anatomy and all the rest of it, and you're doing your amazing consultations. You have to have people, clients to do that too don't you and therefore you need to also master 
the business side of things. So tell us a bit about what's on offer in the mastery program in regards to business. So yeah, it's one of the it's one of the big elements of the pro, the the whole program is that we need to actually get people who want their own businesses to build a, their business simultaneously while they're developing the practical skills. So there's a there's a whole load of business support which we've all the information we've learned through building our own clinic. I a lot of people don't realize this, but we have our own clinic separate to Skin Viva training. Some people, I think probably most people do know, but a lot of people don't realize that that, was, that's, that we started first and we learned a lot on the way of building that clinic that we can now pass on to other people because we've actually done it. Like there's a, you can theorize and read books on it and you know even pay, pay people to come and teach you about how to set up a clinic, but unless you've actually done it, you don't know what the real stumbling blocks are. So we've, we can take all that, all that information that we've learned in building our own clinic and apply it to the mastery program to really give, show people how it's done, so how you can actually get a constant stream of clients. And through having those constant uh, stream of clients, you're also going to build your experience in a way that no, no other way can you do that, really. Yeah, I think business is such a stumbling block that you see out there. People have a label for themselves as, oh, I'm not business-minded. And, and I think, actually, it doesn't really matter what you are when you woke up this morning all that matters is is can you grow can you improve can you learn from people like us who've been there done that and have been successful in business and are you willing to actually take the sort of the emotional risk that comes with yeah you have to put yourself out there yes you have to do marketing but it's so fun when you get it right and when you actually feel so proud of yourself for having been scared done it anyway and now you know be it be admired and and be be valued by your patients because you you know you marked it to them and now they're in front of you and they're having you know they're no strained or whatever it is that will make them feel more confident so i think the business side of thing is absolutely crucial and that's why we've designed the mastery program so that it does have that surrounding support and help and and mentorship as well so that people actually stay on track and keep going Absolutely, you've you've got to master all these all these skills simultaneously. That's one of the that's one of the reasons why it's difficult is that you're trying to do learn some marketing and learn a new injection technique and learn about your products and learn about the psychology of your patient and handle your patient afterwards and all that stuff is is all part of the whole program because ultimately, if even one of those components is missing, you don't really end up with a business. You lose heart at least, yeah, um, or you find it really difficult and unpleasant. So delivering the whole package the whole sequence of training as much as we can simultaneously in the right order should enable people to it'll be way quicker than doing it any other way that's that's for sure so there's the whole debate obviously at the moment about level seven in the industry people are thinking oh you know should i future proof my my learning in aesthetics by getting the stamp of level seven how does that relate to the mastery program so yeah, we so we still have the the level seven program running, and you can still join that at the moment. The purpose of level seven came from Health Education England's recommendations around what standards should be. It's now owned by the JCCP, who are voluntary regulatory body, so you don't have to join it. Um, but they're the the closest thing to the body that might form some sort of regulation if that ever does occur. Um, obviously, lots of people do want that, but if you if that did became become statute then you would probably have to do something to meet their standards. And that's why we, what we thought is that as part of the mastery program, we'll build it so that the components of the mastery program will contribute towards level seven. So that you'll be able to rapidly convert what you've already done into a level seven qualification um, so, that you're, so that you're up to speed when the industry, if the industry changes, it's very up in the air at the moment. Yeah, you can certainly make a small step in, ter in terms of converting into level seven. But in the meantime, you should already have a thriving business. That would exactly. Be goal. Well, that's what we're all after, isn't it? So jumping off that, where if I'm, you know, if it took you 11 years to get to where you are now, presumably, you know, you are saying that this program will, we can absolutely shrink that down to, to something, you know, way less. Let's say that in, if I'm starting this master or I'm listening to this, this podcast now, and I'm thinking of signing up to the mastery program, where would I be if I started tomorrow? Where would I be in 18 months time? Like what's my life going to look like? So our, our goal is that we, that the, the vast majority of all the learning all the, the learning process is complete within 18 months. So that's including all the non-clinical skills as well as the, the clinical skills. So there's the, it will be a, a busy 18 months, but that, that would be the goal. So you should have a, um, if it's your goal, you should have an independent clinic running by then. Um, if you're 
you know, you may decide you want to work for other people. That's possible as well. That probably a little bit quicker because you don't have to do as much of the non-clinical components. Um, but certainly by, by 18 months, you should be in a different world in terms of your skill set. You'll be way further on than, I think you'll be way further on than a lot of people ever get in their career because I, I know that injectors stop. You know, you meet the patients, unfortunately, who've got cheeks, nasal labial folds and marionette lines filled and nothing else and they look a bit odd. So no one who's on the mastery program is going to get stuck at that point. You're going to keep going until you're a holistic and skilled practitioner, um, but also with the right skills to build a business. And then what does that mean for your life, though? Like, I'm, I'm wondering, you know, how, how, what do you have in your life now, 11 years later, that obviously these guys can get sooner, but what, how does your life look compared with what you were, where you are at the NHS? Well, the, the biggest difference if you work for yourself is you just, you have that autonomy and, and it's that freedom to, to change things around, to shift, to shift your time in the way that suits you. Um, but also a real connection with effort and reward. Mm. So it's quite easy to um, to work in the NHS and put extra effort in for good reasons, but it feels like it disappears sometimes unless you, unless it's, and you know, never disappears when you're helping an individual patient because you do it for a different reason. But stay, you're st- you're st- say you're staying late to do paperwork and you're just doing it because you felt, you know, it's the right thing, but you're not getting paid for it. There's a sense of like, how's this ever going to impact my life? It's it's just loads of extra work for nothing for you personally because the per- ideally everything lines up like it's good for you it's good for your patients it's good for your family it's good for the for, it's good for everyone around you and when things aren't in al- in an alignment which they often aren't in in the NHS you end up feeling a bit stuck and unappre- underappreciated and you should get away from that because you will you'll have that direct connection between every hour that you put in making it making a tangible difference and you get to create something you know, that's yours. It's so powerful. I see it happening to people all the time who are striving and they've created this beautiful clinic and they're proud of it and they do marketing and they, they surprise themselves with, with what they can achieve. It's actually a beautiful thing. Yeah, no, absolutely. People do discover that they're more capable than they think they are a lot of the time. So if I'm intrigued by the mastery program, what should I do next? So it's application only. You need to send us a CV and a covering letter and we will be in touch with those people. Applications open in October. So uh, send us contact details. will be, I think, on the bottom of this. Fab. So I hope you guys have found that interesting. It's one of my favorite topics at the moment is going through what it takes to become a master. Um, any questions or comments, we'd love to hear from you. So let us know via the usual channels, either my Facebook page or you can um, leave a review on iTunes. Thanks very much for listening. Thanks, guys.